Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and it would be my pleasure to be able to rise and speak on Bill C-19, getting rid of the wasteful and useless long gun registry. And I'm uh, proud to split my time with the member from Portage Lisgar, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety, and I want to thank her for her yeoman's effort that she has put in on getting rid of the long gun registry. In the last parliament, her private members built and the long gun registry uh, nearly passed, uh, lost by two votes. Uh, I can tell you in my time in, in Parliament since 2004, that was the closest until today. That was the closest that we ever got to getting rid of the long gun registry. Uh, I have to thank the Minister of Public Safety for bringing forward this bill, uh, for listening to uh, firearms owners right across this country, listening to ranchers, farmers, hunters, sports people uh, who enjoy the outdoors, who enjoy uh, target shooting. And he listened and was able to put that all together in a comprehensive bill uh, that will make sure that we get rid of the registry, that we get rid of that data, Mr. Speaker, and more importantly, takes away this incredible onus on responsible Canadians from having to register their long guns. And of course, you know, we can't talk on this bill without thanking the MP from Yorkton Melville, who has been fighting this since 1995 here in the House of Commons. You know, he has been an incredible uh, spokesperson on behalf of wildlife organizations, on behalf of firearms owners uh, right across this country, uh, always getting the details, getting the data and the real statistics on how useless the long gun registry has been and how it has really made law-abiding citizens into criminals. Now, I've been listening to the debate, and uh, my friend from Winnipeg North got up and, and uh, you know, made a number of accusations, and I, I do want to address some of those in my speech today. You know, I've been fighting Bill C-68 since 1995. When I was with the Manitoba Cattle Producers Association, I presented to the Standing Committee, or the Senate Committee, on Bill C-68 when it was traveling across Manitoba. And I told those um, majority Liberal Senators at that time that this was going to be a discriminatory bill against rural Canadians that it was going to make sure that individuals involved in the agriculture industry that use firearms, long guns in particular, as a tool in controlling predators, in controlling varmints that you don't want around the yard, like rabid skunks or raccoons, uh, by, by making sure that uh, if an animal goes down, that you can put that, down, that animal down humanely because it's ill or injured, uh, and for the times that we actually do our own butchering on the farm. We need to have those lung guns there. Plus, many of us, of course, in the agriculture industry are also uh, outdoors people. We love hunting. We love fishing. And, of course, when we go out hunting, we've got to have our firearms. And because of the way Bill C-68 was brought in, it automatically labeled anyone that owned a firearm that didn't register it as a criminal. And the member from Winnipeg North says, well, nobody was ever arrested based upon that fact that they never registered their firearms. Well, we know that the bill was specific. You don't register, you're a criminal. Luckily, the Western provinces instructed their police forces, mainly the RCMP at that time, uh, not to enforce the, the firearms registry for those that didn't actually uh, register their long guns. For the most part, that was upheld. I know of two cases in Alberta alone where far, firearms owners were arrested and their guns confiscated because they failed to re-register their firearms. I also know of a friend of mine, Bruce Montenegg, who uh, was in Kenora and uh, is a gunsmith, is a gun collector, and goes out to gun shows, was arrested after a gun show in northwestern Ontario and went to jail over it and kept fighting it because he knew that it was wrong, that he should be treated as a criminal for legally owning firearms, even though he never registered them. And I agree with him. They were there as a part of his collection. It was part of his craft, never meant for criminal use. And yet he was treated as a criminal, he was fined under the legislation, and put in jail. That is just wrong in too many ways. Now, we're hearing all these accusations, or all these uh, exclamations, that it's been because of the gun registry that we've seen a reduction in gun-related crimes. While we know for a fact that gun-related crimes, gun-related accidents, uh, suicides that happen with firearms, with long guns in particular, have been on the decline since the 1970s. We know for a fact that since the previous Conservative government, uh, 
when Kim Campbell was the Minister of Justice and brought in the first bill to bring in the firearms acquisition certificates and brought in the need for safe storage and handling and making sure that firearms owners had taken firearm safety courses, it's at that point in time that we saw a massive reduction in whether it's accidental shootings, kids playing with guns because they weren't locked up or stored properly, uh, that people hadn't properly been trained and so there was an accidental shooting when they'd been out on a hunting excursion. Uh, you know, then we know that there was a real difference made in the number of accidents, the number of suicides, or the number of crimes that were committed with long guns. That's because firearm owners were getting the proper training. They were storing and locking up their handguns properly, and they were handling them properly. That's an education measure that has nothing to do with the long gun registry itself. Now, we will be con continuing on with the licensing requirement of individuals. That hasn't changed in the last 20, 25 years. That will stay in place. And to be a licensed firearms owner, you have to have a firearm safety course under your belt. I took my hunter safety course back in 1977 when I was like 13, 14 years old. And it's because of that training that I properly handle my firearms and that they're properly stored and that they're under lock and key. Now, I never registered any of my firearms. I refuse to do so as my act of civil disobedience. Thanks to the province of Manitoba, I was never treated as a criminal per se, but I have made exclamations many times in this house and outside this house that I refused to register my long guns. Now, let's really be clear about the stats here. And, you know, there, there's been a lot of numbers thrown around. 2003, in Vancouver, you now one of the hotbeds of gun crime happening, over 97% of the firearms that were collected on the streets through the entire year were not registered. Criminals don't register their firearms. We've stated that over and over again. We know that they're going to use handguns. Well, handguns under the current legislation will still be registered, and they have been since 1925. So that will not change. So targeting law-abiding citizens like long gun owners is a waste of tax dollars. It's a waste of police time. It's a waste of public service time in administrating a registry that does nothing to prevent any of those long gun uh, or any gun crimes uh, that we talk about. You know, if you look since the 1970s, murder rates cr caused with guns, long guns and, and, uh, and, and any firearms that matter, that murder rate is 1.9 murders per 100,000 people. 1.9 murders per year per 100,000 people. If you compare that to the population of registered firearms owners, that number goes down to 0.38 murders per 100,000 people. The most law-abiding people in this country are licensed firearms owners. So why are we making them look like criminals? You know, Professor Gary Mauser went and looked at all murders since 1997. Less than 2% of them were committed with licensed firearms, uh, by firearm owners, and out of those licensed firearms owners, and you take in that total, it's only 1.2% of them were, were done with registered firearms. And it comes down to the fact, it's not firearms owners that, or it's not, not people, it's not guns that kill people, it's people that kill people, and that's who we have to target. Mr. Speaker, just to summarize, you know, the NDP and the Liberals have stated over and over again, they want the gun registry. They, if they ever have a chance to come back into power, they will bring back the gun registry. I have to criticize the member from Western Arctic, the member from Churchill, who went out and campaigned and said, vote for me, I will vote to get rid of the gun, long gun registry, and yet they reversed themselves at second reading here and voted to, uh, in favor, or along with their colleagues, to kill our bill to end the long gun registry once and for all. I have to thank the members from Thunder Bay Superior North and Thunder Bay Rainy River 
for standing up against their party leadership, voting for their constituents, and making sure that we get rid of the Swan Gun Registry once and for all. And, you know, they've been sanctioned, they've been silenced, and their constituents do not have a voice in this House of Commons because of that NDP leadership, but they deserve to be uh, given all the accolades in the world for allowing the grassroots to speak to them and for them carrying that voice back here into the House of Commons. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? L'enlève député de Trois-Rivières. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le sujet qui nous divise est profond et ce n'est pas ma question qui va nous rapprocher.